Hello and welcome to this session on Amazon S3. In this video, we're going to cover creating a .NET Core Web API, we're going to add an S3 client, and then we're going to create an endpoint that will allow us to create an S3 bucket on AWS. Okay, so let's get started by creating our project. We're going to go up to File, New Project. We're going to create an ASP.NET Core Web Application, and we're going to call it S3 Test Web API. Select OK, and it's going to be an empty template. And now we're going to head over to Startup, and we're going to add our MVC pipeline, so that's services.add MVC. We'll make sure everything's built so you can see everything's ready at the moment. We'll just build the application. Great. We'll delete this app.run, which is the sample code, and we'll say uh, app.useMVC. And that's going to load up our MVC pipeline middleware, um, allowing us to add routes to our controllers so we can hit our endpoints. Now we're going to right click on our project. And we're going to say add new folder. And I'm going to call that controllers. In our controllers, we're going to right click and say add controller. And we're going to add an API controller empty. Then we're going to call that S3 bucket controller. Select add. Okay, so now we've got an empty controller class. We're going to create our first method. So we're going to say public with an I action result as a return type. Call this create bucket. We're going to return an OK response there. And this is going to be a post action. So we're going to decorate it up the top here with an HTTP post. And we also want to pass in the bucket name that we want created. So let's go ahead and add our query that we're going to allow to be passed in, which is bucket name. And we're going to set that in the parameters as well. So we're going to say from route string bucket name. Okay, so we want our I action result method to be async. So we're going to add the async keywords here. So we're going to say async and task. of I action result. And next what we're going to do is actually call off to a service class that we're about to create that's then going to hold our logic where our create bucket will happen. So we want to get a response back. So we're going to say var response equals await service.create bucket async. And we haven't got the service set up yet, so don't worry about that's being read. And we're going to pass in the bucket name. The response we're going to pass into our return there. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our service. So we're going to head up to our class and create a field, private read only, is 3 service, which is going to be our service class name, and service. We're going to initialize that from the constructor. Uh, so I've put Alt Enter and said initialize from constructor. And now we're going to create our class. So let's create a folder in our project. And the folder is going to be called services. And inside our services, we're going to create a class. And we're going to call it S3 service. We also want to have an interface because we're going to use dependency and injection. So we're going to say is3 service and we use ReSharp to help us create that. So I'm going to Alt Enter, create interface. Excellent. I'm going to say Control Shift R, so using some shortcuts here to help me uh, code a bit faster, and say Move to another file. IS3 Service is the name we want to give it, and now let's create an interface with the service class. 
Let's go ahead and make sure that we have added our I service i s3 service and our s3 service class we've injected it inside our controller so inside configure services we're going to say services dot add singleton and we're going to say i s3 service we're going to bind that to the s3 service class that we've created close that off <clears throat> excellent now while we're here, um, we're going to install our uh, AWS SDK extensions.net course setup package. This is going to allow us to grab information from our credentials file and then use dependency injection to inject the iAmazon S3 client that we're about to create. So we're going to go over to package manager and I'm going to select our NuGet public. I'm going to say install package. AWS SDK dot extensions dot net core dot setup. Great, it's worked. Now I'm going to say services dot add AWS. Let me just fix up that spelling. Services dot add AWS service there. Excellent. And we're going to pass it in the I Amazon S3. Great, now we need to install the Amazon S3 client. So we're going to go back over to our package manager console and say install package AWS SDK dot S3. Excellent. So now that's allowing us to inject our Amazon S3 client inside our configure services inside the startup. When creating your AWS client, it looks for a credentials fold stored in your user profile.aws directory. I'm in here under Daniel Dombavand and .aws and I'm going to show you the credentials example file. So you would have and store your access key, secret key, region in this file and this is where the client will pick it up. Let's head back to our S3 service and up the top here we create a field for our client which is going to be private read only i amazon s3 name that client we're going to initialize the field from our constructor and now we're going to create our create bucket async method so we're going to say public async task and the name of the method is going to be create bucket async and we're going to pass it in that string bucket name that we're passing in from our controller now let's check a try catch around this because often with Amazon Amazon stuff is that if things go wrong you really need to catch those exceptions so you can see what the problem was whether that be invalid credentials or an invalid bucket name or stuff like that. So first we're going to track an if statement and we're going to say wait and then we're going to use the Amazon S3 util and that has a method on it which has a does s3 bucket exist so it's going to be really handy to make sure um, that we check if the bucket exists before we try and create one could because if it exists then it's going to cause us problems if we try and add the same one so we'll say equals false there excellent and we're going to create a put bucket request So the bucket name is going to be the bucket name that we're passing in from our parameters above, up here. And we'll use the client region as well. So we'll set use client region to true and we'll close off our put bucket request. Okay, so now um, let's grab the response from there and say equals await client 
And now we're going to do the put bucket async, which is going to actually create the um, bucket using the request that we've just created above. So put bucket async, and we'll pass in our put bucket request that we just created. Finish that off. So in our catches, we want to have the catch exception, so we catch everything there. And we'll console right line that. And then we could also do a um, Amazon specific exception. So Amazon S3 exception. And then we could say console write line and write the messages that we want out. Um, uh, this can be okay if you want to just debug and make sure you can see if everything's going um, all right. But I think let's go one step further. Let's create a model that will give us an HTTP status code and also the message. What the problem with just doing a catch with the console write line is that when we head back to our controllers and we also pass in, we get a response back, we won't be getting anything that has been stored in those console write lines. So we kind of want something passed back if something goes wrong so that when we do our request in, say, our Postman client, then we'll be able to easily see what's gone wrong. I'm just also going to um, add the reference because now we have the IS3 service set up. And we are also going to create our task create bucket in our interface as well. Awesome. So if we head back to our controller, our create bucket async is a void at the moment, so it's not allowing us to return a response, but we'll fix that now. So let's head back to our S3 service. And now we're going to actually create a, a, a folder here, and it's going to be models and inside our models folder let's create a class called s3 response inside our s3 response you can put anything that you think would be quite handy to return here let's try a couple of simple things so let's try an http status code and we'll call that status and also a message as well so whether it's good or bad we're going to receive something back from our controller excellent head back to our service and now at the top here let's return something so let's say task s3 uh, response let's make sure that we add that into our is3 service interface as well And if we head back to our controller, we can see now that the that that's been taken care of because now we are expecting that we can we're able to return something. So heading back to our S3 service, we now need to actually return something from our create bucket async. So what we're getting back in this response is a put bucket response, but we need to actually get back an S3 response. So let's say return new S3 response. And inside that, let's say uh, message equals response dot uh, response metadata and also status equals response dot HTTP status code. Okay, let's send the message because the response data had a return, it was not a string return type, so we have to add something else to it. But we can add the request ID to the message. And we're also going to pass in the status code here as well. Okay, so that's what we get back when a successful attempt. But now when we have an exception, we also want to have something decent to return back to us there. So let's say return new S3 response. And now first our status code. And so let's say E. status code and also message e for the exception and message there as well and we are also going to do this so there's a lot of duplication here you can see that um, you might want to start uh, creating a separate classes for catching um, these exceptions or um, creating these models but for the practice code here it kind of just shows you a way of how you can create things that um, allow you to capture messages and status codes so i'm going to say internal server error if we get to this point 
and the message e dot message and finally one down the very bottom here again this is scaring me how much duplication there is but <laughs> I would refactor this immediately something went wrong Okay, but now at least that's going to give us some kind of information what's going back. So it's always good, like first cut, let's go through, you know, create these type of things and then look at where the duplication is and look at how we can fix it. Let's head back to our controller. Let's save and build. Now our route is going to be API S3 bucket. Our request is going to be an HTTP post and we're going to and it's expecting a bucket name as a parameter and I've noticed I'm just missing some curly braces there so I'll just add that and I'm going to run my application grab the local host and port number and we'll head over to postman and we'll paste our local host with our port our API s3 bucket route we're also going to set our request to a post and we're going to call this YouTube video test click send and we get a status back of 200 and we've got our request ID back awesome let's head over to s3 and at the AWS Amazon console and we'll just refresh that page and see make sure that our bucket has been created and as you can see here our bucket has been created Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please remember to hit like and subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep up with all my latest YouTube tutorials.